What's up, Savvy Expats? I'm here with my good friend, Mike. He's an entrepreneur, content creator, and he's also Filipino and spent most of his time abroad. Mike, it's a pleasure to have you on, my Dude, friend. Dude, thank you so much for having me on your channel. I can't believe we're finally doing this. <laughs> of so. course, yeah. this is a long overdue interview. I've been 100%. wanting to talk to you for a while now on, uh, on channel. And what do you say we met, like about four months ago? Four months ago, yeah. Around four months ago. So let's start with the question of uh, what's your story moving abroad and living, where are you from basically? Sure, yeah, yeah, so I was born here in the Philippines Okay. and I was raised in Saudi Arabia, so my dad worked in the oil and gas industry, right? Okay. And I went there for high school, but in Saudi Arabia, you had to be Muslim to continue your education. So mm -hmm. I went back here for one year. I actually spent, um, a bit of time in Mapua. You know, I went there for civil engineering. Mm. And then during that time, after one year of being there, our application to move to Canada finally got approved. So mm. at 17, 17 years old, that's when my family and I immigrated to Canada. And I'd spent uh, the last 20 years there, wow. went back home once, and then uh, this time. So yeah. yeah, it's been crazy. What was that transition like being from, I mean, you weren't totally from the Philippines when you moved over to Canada. So there was a little bit of a transition period living in Saudi Arabia, right? I went to a Filipino school. So okay. the transition wasn't that drastic just because I was mostly around Filipinos too. But yeah, I had to make adjustments with the new culture, mm. different language, right? You know, just just different, so. Right. Yeah. And so whereabouts in Canada did you guys uh, end up settling down? Uh, we ended up in Calgary. In Calgary. Which is like the Texas of yeah. Canada, right? So. I mean, I can only imagine living in the Philippines, it's hot. Living in Saudi, it's hot. And then you move over to Canada, it's freezing. How is that for you? We went from plus 50 to <laughs> negative 50 very quickly. So, I can imagine, yeah, I can imagine. Insane. So you were in Calgary. What did you do for work out there? And really quick before Mike answers that, at the time of filming this video, it's late February. However, we are opening up slots early for the month of March five slots to work one-on-one -on -one with me for the expat relocation program. So if you're moving to the Philippines within the next one to three months, book a call with me in the link down below and I'll see if you're qualified to work with me for your Philippine move. Cheers. I, uh, so I continued my education. So I, uh, I was sent back to grade 12 when I moved to Calgary. And then I went to a technical school with the option to get my degree still in civil engineering. But when I graduated from the technical school, the job market was so hot. Mm -hmm. So I, I ended up getting a job right away at 19 years old. So I worked for a civil structural, I, I worked for a, an engineering company okay. doing structural design. Okay, and how yeah. long was that for? Uh, on and off for seven years. Seven years? Yeah. So up to 26. I'm not as young as I look, bro. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't mind disclosing to the viewers, how old are you, Mike? I was born in 1985, so I'll be 39 this year. Guys, I tell you, when Mike told me his age, that he's about to be 40, I, I couldn't believe it at all. I couldn't believe it at all. What's your secret? Let's see. I go to bed early. Okay. I do prioritize my health. I yeah. have a lot, a lot of um, mindfulness practice that I do on a daily basis. So I, I meditate, I journal, I surround myself with positive people. And yeah, I've just learned the value of managing my thoughts and reflecting and not sweating the small stuff. So there you have it. Yeah. There you have it. So you were in Canada. You had your civil engineering job for around seven years. Mm -hmm. How long were you, how long did you end up staying in Canada before you decided to make that switch and start traveling abroad? I say 20 years, but I've, I've had the ability to travel anywhere for, uh, for seven years. It, mm. it was the long flight that deterred me from being on this side of the world. Right. So I've spent a lot of time in the US. I've traveled all over Canada too, but I've been okay. able to work remotely for the last seven years. For the last seven years. Yeah. And I mean, we've interviewed a lot of other expats on the channel, especially Filipino Americans mm -hmm. and Filipinos that are raised in the West. Mm -hmm. And it makes me question like, what? brought you back to the Philippines? Because you could have just stayed in Canada or For you sure. could have just traveled around to other countries as yeah. well. Yeah, there's many reasons. I'm, you know, as a digital nomad myself, I'm friends with other digital nomads, right? And mm -hmm. obviously with the influence of YouTube, Instagram, you know, you see all these people living in all these exotic places and then they're mentioning all the prices. I'm like, well, well, I can have that life too. But unfortunately, my girlfriend, um, at that time, wasn't able to work remotely yet. Mm. So, because I love her, I helped her get her business online. Right. And when she was finally able to do that, that's when we finally made the move and, and moved to this side of the world. 
So it was specifically to the Philippines that you guys made the move, or did you go to any other country before? Here? We were going to go to Mexico first, but okay. when we were making the move, it, it, uh, the Philippines were starting to change their travel regulations. So okay. we actually, it's funny because we had bought the ticket, we had booked the Airbnb, but then when, when the, uh, the travel regulations for the Philippines loosened up, we had to like cancel everything. So thank God we got a refund for everything, and we ended up choosing the Philippines instead. Right, right. And so you, we also mentioned that you've been to other countries in Southeast Asia. Which, yeah. where, where else have you been? I've been to Thailand uh, I've been, and I've been to Bali so far. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we'll actually talk more about that later and sure, how like, sure. that compares to living in the Philippines. Yeah. But the biggest question that I had is, uh, as a Filipino raised abroad in mm -hmm. the West, what has your experience been like initially being back in the motherland? Hmm. I'm sure that's it's a big a great, shock. That's a great question. So I'm going to, to answer that question, I'm going to, tell you a quick story first of course so when I moved to Canada it was a big culture shock right mm -hmm. because during that time I've never seen white people you know the only I, I grew up in the provinces right you know I was raised in a farm I was in Mindoro where like the only time I got to see white people were you know on TV shows movies right mm -hmm. so I made this association that you know light light skinned people are you know superior right or mm -hmm. they're popular mm -hmm. so when I moved to Canada this was you know before before I got into self-development and, you know, Calgary just so happens to be one of the whitest cities, right, in all of Canada, right? Yeah. Because of the industry that exists there predominantly. So moving there at 17, like I wasn't quite young, but I wasn't quite that old. So it, it, it's a bit of a weird transition for me, you know, like speaking English for the first time, seeing white people for the first time. It was a bit of a transition. So I worked a lot of low-level jobs while I was there. Like mm -hmm. I worked at Subway, that was my first job, then McDonald's, right? Then I noticed that other immigrants who were getting ahead in that um, city mm -hmm. were more articulate, right? They were, they, were, they were very outgoing. So at a young age, I knew that if I wanted to thrive and succeed in this new environment, I'm going to have to expand my personality, right? Mm -hmm. So because of that, I've adopted a lot of Western perspectives, ide ideologies, right, so to speak. So coming back here in the Philippines, I thought I would just, you know, pick up where I left off because I was born here. And boy, was I wrong, <laughs> right? I had to, that's actually how I found your channel. You know, right. like I, I just had some, some uh, incidences that didn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. So besides my parents were, you know, I was trying to get clarification about like, hey, what did this mean? Like, I, I just didn't know who to turn to. Mm -hmm. so, so of course, when you're unsure about something, you go to YouTube, right? <laughs> so mm. I started, you know, typing in some stuff, and that's actually how uh, I found your channel. So fantastic, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's like, yeah, that's how we met is yeah. uh, through the channel. But yeah. I can imagine that coming here after 20 years of being just completely in Canada, completely mm -hmm. immersed in the West, mm -hmm. that was a big shock for you. For sure. What would you say were those main culture shocks you've experienced? <sighs> in a way, reverse culture shocks, actually. Yeah, yeah, I would say. A big thing that shocked me the most was the speed of how things get done here. Mm. And I would also say like the context in communication with people here as well. Mm. So, and I would say even like humor, you know, like, like just different. It's different, right? Yeah. And I've completely. had to be more open-minded mm -hmm. and be like, well, this is how it is here, you know? The same way that I had to expand my personality being in Canada, I was reminded again that I should do the same now that I'm back here in the Philippines, so. And with that being said, I mean, obviously there was some sort of cultural and language barrier of you spending the majority of your life in Canada. Mm -hmm. So when you come back here and you interact with the locals, how has your experience been with that? Initially, it was difficult because I, most of my friends in Canada were Canadians, right? I do business in English and yeah, you know, my girlfriend's Canadian too. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't really exposed to a lot of Filipinos except my immediate family. Mm -hmm. So being back here, I would, like I, I still knew how to speak Tagalog, but it was so rudimentary, right? Mm -hmm. So I would think in English and I would have to like translate into Tagalog. Mm -hmm. So initially my communication with the local, the, like, there were a lot of lulls because <laughs> I just couldn't think of the words, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, right. Yeah. Totally. I'm still actually in that stage of like thinking in English, translating yes. in Tagalog. Yeah. So I, I get a lot of people like, Anadao? What do you yeah, say? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But 
I mean, being that you were you spent a lot of your time in Canada, your humor is different, right? The way that you interact is completely different. Mm -hmm. The outlook you have on life is different. Mm -hmm. I think those things are very overlooked because, yes, you may have been born here in the Philippines, but when you're exposed in that environment for such a long period of time and you come back to the Philippines, mm -hmm. back to the motherland, mm -hmm. uh, how you interact with the locals just completely changes. For sure. Right, and so that, that's been your experience, would you say? Yeah, I mean, I made the mistake of expecting things were going to be the same, right, right. in the West. Some, there's some similarities, mm -hmm. but obviously they're not going to be the exact same unless I interacted with another balik bayan like myself, right? right. You know, another you know, Filipino who had the same experience that I had, whether it, it, they're from the U.S. or from Canada. And I've met those people and, you know, we got along like this because we have more things in common, right? You know, mm -hmm. being born here, being raised abroad and coming back, right? Mm -hmm. With the locals, I, I have had similar conversations, you mm -hmm. know, like a lot of some of the locals that I've met are open-minded, ambitious, you know, like they're, they're question, they're able to question things and think for themselves. So in that regards, we had a nice interaction. So, right. Yeah. Would you say that you get treated any differently being a Balik Bayan as opposed to compared to a local Filipino? I've made a genuine effort to not come across like a Balik Bayan. Right. And ever since then, I've had a much better experience mm -hmm. being here in the Philippines. Initially on your arrival, were you getting treated any different? I was like, getting treated differently for okay. sure. Yeah. In what ways? I would say I feel like there is a I guess confusion okay. where <laughs> yeah, I've you know that. like they you know I look Filipino, right? Right. But then I would speak differently, I would think differently. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's right. I think they're confused. Gotcha. <laughs> so, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. definitely a confusion there. Yeah. Also like especially when they hear some sort of accent as For well. For sure, yeah. So have you had any negative experiences with the locals here as a Filipino Canadian? I would say I've had more positives than negatives. Great. Yeah. Great, great. I have had a handful of negatives, mm -hmm. but that's to be expected, right? You know, mm -hmm. that's part of traveling, being in a different culture. Mm -hmm. You know, I, both parties adjusting, you know, like myself and the local involved, right. so to speak, right? So, yeah. right. So, switching gears a little bit more into like your work life and the online business that you're running, can sure. you dive a little bit deeper into what you do for work to yeah. sustain your lifestyle here in the Philippines? Sure. Yeah. So, my business provides verbal fluency training to software engineers. So, if you imagine, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, like a, like a software engineer, late 20s, predominantly, you know, male, right? Mm -hmm. No friends, no girlfriend. They've spent the majority of their lives acquiring technical skills mm -hmm. and they haven't had a lot of time improving their ability to interact with people. Mm -hmm. That Those are the types of people that we help. We help them improve their ability to communicate with their coworkers, have a social life outside of work so they can have more meaningful relationships and feel more connected. Right. Yeah. Would you say that your move to Canada and having to adjust to being in a different environment socially, especially socially, played a big role in starting yeah. that business? How so? Yeah, it was a problem that I had when I was younger. Obviously, I, you know, kind of like what I mentioned earlier, right? Like I didn't speak English. I've never seen white people. I suffered from really bad social anxiety. Like in fact, I can remember back in high school, I would eat my lunch in a bathroom stall because I was so scared of interacting with with people. Right? Mm. You know, um, I just. I didn't really know how to assimilate because right. no one educated me. There wasn't like a manual where like, here's how you integrate yourself into Canada, right? Like there right. wasn't any of that. You know, I had mm. to figure out a lot of things on my own. And unfortunately back then, the resources mm. for this particular topic wasn't as robust. Okay. So yeah, I was kind of left to figure things out through trial and error. And so how long were you running the social skills business for? I've been running it full time for 10 years. 10 so years. So I taught it in person for th the first three, okay. and that's when I moved everything online the last wow. seven years. So, so it's completely remote? Completely remote, yeah. And that's how you're able to travel now as a digital yeah. nomad? Yeah. Wow. So, how, so you took. You've been running it for 10 years. For three years, it was completely in person. Yeah. So were you just running live events in Canada? Yeah, I, I remember my first uh, attempt to get a client, right? Yeah. I was like, well, people are doing these things called webinars, but I don't have the, this was back then when, you know, I, I just didn't have as much 
funding, right, for the business. Mm. So I used my resourcefulness. You know, I rented a, co- uh, a boardroom in a coffee shop and I applied like all the marketing techniques that all the online people were doing, but I did it in person, right? Right. And to my surprise, it worked too. So right. yeah, that's how I got my first few clients back in the day, wow. running workshops in coffee shops. Yeah, just to let you guys know, like Mike and I, we talked about the uh, the growth of his business and the, the amount of uh, trial and error it took to build this business and get to this point now where you can run it completely remotely online. And it's, it's very inspirational. I appreciate that. It's very yeah. inspirational. So it's run completely online. Can you give us, and you don't have to be specific, but can you give us a ballpark estimate of how much your, your business is making per year? I make a lot more than my engineering job. We'll just put it that, put it that yeah. that's for sure. So, Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So it's enough for you to just travel whenever oh, yeah. you want. Yeah. Yeah. And you're actually going to Vietnam tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, yes. During the time of this recording, I'm going to be visiting Vietnam for the first time. And mm. we have, we're staying at a at a nice place by the beach and I'm excited to have some pho and banh mi, so. Fantastic. Yeah. So at this point, your business is at a place where it makes more than an average engineering job. With that sort of income that you have, what sort of lifestyle does that afford you in Southeast Asia? Oh my goodness. It's just really nice to be able to order from the left side of the menu than the right side of the menu, <laughs> if, you know what, if you know what I'm talking about, right? Because, right? you know, I again, I was born poor right and we you know we were very price conscious where like I love my mom to death but I, I have this distinct memory where every time I would point to her you know like hey mom I want that mm. and she would always say Panisian that mm. means in English that means it's expired right my right. mom would always say that so yeah you know I, I grew up really like val- valuing the price of something first before making a purchase mm. but obviously like living here due to you know the exchange rate and you know cost arbitrage it's just nice to be able to have a more comfortable lifestyle without having to worry so much about how much it costs mm-hmm. so right how i mean obviously your business is doing is doing well for itself but how do you think your lifestyle would compare if you stayed in canada with the current income you're living on versus coming out here to the philippines like you have i i feel like I would either have to work more and, and you know, to like have this, like last year, I saved so much more money, mm-hmm. right, compared to living in Canada because I actually did the math. My expenses are down by 60%. Wow. And that's including like a very lavish lifestyle here, right? You know, right. F- factoring in all the trips we did and, you know, I was eating out basically like almost every day right <laughs> and right. you know the shopping and whatnot right so yeah, yeah. I, I was able to save 60% without changing anything in fact like raising the quality of my life I'm able to save more yeah as a matter of fact that's why this interview is long overdue because you're spending a few months in Bali yeah I've spent a f- I spent three months in Bali oh, last yeah. Uh, yeah 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 before, before this interview so so if I'm looking at like the the life you're living from the outside looking in, and if I'm like an expat and I'm seeing mm-hmm. what you're doing, you're a digital nomad, you're traveling abroad, you're running your business completely online, remotely, and you're making money online, I would want to ask, Mike, what is it? How do you do what you do? So do you have any advice for an expat looking to make money living abroad for online? Sure. Yeah, I would say solve a problem. That's mm-hmm. the most important thing because at the end of the day, like people will pay you to improve their life, right? You know, mm. so in my opinion, this is just like from my experience, like take an evaluation of your current skill set, figure out what you're good at, and then see how that resonates to a specific problem out there, right? Mm. And if you're able to find that match between what you're good at, what w- people are willing to pay for, and what's what's out there, mm. like there's there's no way you'll be able to not make money because people will always pay to, you know, lose weight, uh, dress better, improve their communication skills, mm. save money on taxes, right? right like there's right. so many problems out there. So instead of, think, instead of asking yourself, how can I make money? I would ask myself, what problem can I solve, right? Mm. Because the bigger the problem, the more money you can charge. So. Exactly, exactly. And so for you, that was improving social skills for engineers, right? Exactly, because yeah. to me, like that was a problem that I had before. I no longer have that problem, in fact, like, it's improved the quality of my life. So to me, like, I, I see this business more, more kind of like, like a life calling, right? Like, like having the ability to interact with people, put myself out there and 
ar ar articulate my thoughts mm. has dramatically improved my relationships in every area of my life so yeah and i will say i think because of your skill set we've grown such a large circle of entrepreneurs here in bgc for sure yeah which started with you yeah. and it started with you networking yeah. meeting different people and just bringing us all together yeah and so i say that's actually how i met the majority of my friends out here in bgc who are entrepreneurs who are ambitious and also expats from abroad is through through mike and uh would you do you have a name for this entrepreneur meetup that you have here I just call them like digital nomad meetups, you right. know, you know, it, it kind of speaks for itself. Like those are the kind of people that I'm looking for. We're doing a meetup. So, right. yeah, <laughs> I will say you're, you're probably the best networker I've ever met. I appreciate so, that. Yeah. So with that being said, I mean, an expat coming here from abroad, they're moving here. They have no friends at all. It's a completely new life. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to an expat that's looking to integrate themselves in the community here? How for have sure. you done it? For sure. Yeah. There's a framework that I teach my students in our program and I'll share it with the viewers today, sure. I call it the VVV framework and it mm. stands for value, venue, and volume, right? So at the end of the day, mutual interest mm. is the foundation of every great relationship. It's just so much easier to spend time with someone who likes the same things as you, has a similar perspective, right? Right. So you start off with that, right? You have to go within and ask yourself, what's important to me? What do I value? What are things that I'm into? And it's when, once you're clear about that, then you find the venue where are those types of people hanging out right so mm. I'll give you an example so for me I value ambition I value creativity I value drive right so okay cool like I want to meet these kinds of people that being said if I value those things where are the best places for me to meet those people so for me specifically I meet them a lot at trendy coffee shops I meet them a lot through um, different Facebook groups I meet them through like even Instagram, right? You know, mm. you, you like a photo, you send some DMs, and the next thing you know, you're meeting up in person. Right. I've been to a lot of networking events here as well that are driven more towards, you know, startups and tech innovations and whatnot, mm. right? And from then on, you're going out, you're meeting people. You just have to make an effort to start a conversation, find commonalities, and the key is to keep in touch, right? You know, especially right. these days, I, I mean, just from my experience, nobody asks for phone numbers anymore. That's why it's so important that you have some sort of social media presence mm. because these days people exchange Instagram handles, right? They don't really ask for phone numbers. So yeah, you know, have, have a, a social media presence that's an accurate rep representation of you that you can use as your online wingman, so to speak, right? Mm. So that you're, you're amplifying your, your presence, right? And then, yeah, keep in touch with people and then bring people together, you know, like once every couple of weeks, once a month, whatever fits your schedule, invite everyone out that you've met, you know, pick an activity. You know, for me, I like happy hours, brunches, lunches, right? And that's really it, you know, mm. like rinse and repeat. And then, the, sorry, the last thing that I wanted to say is volume, right? Like you have to make sure that the venue that you're going to has enough of the kind of people that you want to meet because I had the student before, he's, you know, he really valued fitness and he's like, oh, Mike, your advice doesn't work, right? I'm not meeting enough people. And I'm like, okay, well, where are you going? Well, I'm going on this rowing class. And I'm like, okay, how many people are there? And he's like, there's only two. <laughs> well, yeah, of course it's not gonna work because right. there's not enough people for you to interact with, right? So if right. you keep in mind, again, value, venue, and then volume, what, what's important to you? Where do, where do those people hang out who like the same things? And is there enough of them? If you combine those ideas together, that's how you're gonna have an easier time making like-minded friends abroad, so. Got it. I mean, amazing advice here. You heard it from the man himself. So it should, we, should be, uh, we should be paying you for this advice. <laughs> this one's free. Don't this worry. one's free. Yeah. We appreciate that, Mike. <laughs> so today you live a life where you actually just curated your entire circle here in the Philippines. Sure. But most expats, when they're coming here, they don't know how to do such things, sure, right? Yeah. So for you initially, when you first moved out here, did you have any trouble making friends? For me specifically, because I'm now an outgoing person. I wasn't before, but now mm. that I've learned the skills, I had an easier time putting myself out there. Although I will say I've had to calibrate my communication skills being in, in Asia because you know people here are more reserved, they're more soft-spoken, right? So if you approach right. them with that you know, high energy that's like really big, yeah. you're gonna intimidate a lot of people. So you, I had to calibrate right. my initial approach Right. You know, make it softer, more approachable, and in, in that sense, I noticed that people warmed up to me a lot quicker. Interesting. Yeah. That, that is interesting because most individuals, well, I won't say most individuals, but there's more individuals in the West that have more so a, 
assertive, yeah. direct Big. personality, yeah. you know, type loud, A personality, loud. Sure. Whereas in here in the East, most people are a little bit more, you know, timid, yeah. quiet, shy. For sure. For sure. Your personality is the first one that I mentioned. So how has that really affected the way you, you interacted here in the beginning? Yeah, so like what I said, it's all about just being observant, right? You know, if you're from the West and you're moving here, like, you have to keep in mind the, envir- the playing field has changed, right? right? And with that, there's going to be different rules. So you have to understand both the spoken and unspoken rules, right? right. So doing your research, you know, going on YouTube, you know, watching uh, uh, Evan's content on YouTube about the Filipino culture, right? Mm-hmm. And then again, just being observant, right? Like just pay attention to how people interact with each other. And then if, again, if you want to have a seamless experience here, you're going to have to be willing to not change, but expand your personality, right? Mm. You can still be assertive, you can still be loud, and be quiet, and be accommodating, and be patient, mm, right? And right. be soft-spoken. So. Right. Yeah, it's really a matter of just adjusting. Adjusting, you know, uh, I always say to expats, when you're coming out here, remember that you're in a completely new country. For so sure. It's, same, like, it's completely different rules. Yeah. Completely different rules living in the Philippines versus yeah. living in the West. Yeah. Right? So switching gears a little bit more into your cost of living in the Philippines, mm-hmm. let's first start off with, uh, where are you staying right now? I'm staying right now in Eastwood. In Eastwood. We talk about Eastwood on the channel a little bit. Mm-hmm. And uh, second to BGC in Makati, I'd say that Eastwood is like the third, third choice that I'd say. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's actually the first place I've landed in when I moved here. But nice. how, how's your, how has your experience been uh, living in Eastwood? Yeah, it's, it's, it reminds me of, like some parts of it reminds me of New York, you know, with just yeah. the designs of the buildings, right? And, you know, the roads and whatnot. Mm. So, yeah, it's been... It's been really convenient just because like everything's there, you know, right. like I, I step out of my condo, the grocery store is like down right. the street, right? You know, right. then you cross the street, there's a coffee shop, a bunch of restaurants, right? There's a mall like really close to it. So yeah, it's mm. been really convenient, so. Right, and so how much do you spend per month living in Eastwood? Let's see, my Morocco bill is 8,000 pesos. My water bill is not a lot, like a like, like couple hundred. Okay. My rent is uh, free ninety nine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Because yeah, I'm staying at my dad's place, you know, full transparency. So, yeah, but yeah. I looked it up on Airbnb. I uh, I think the going rate for a similar place as mine is like like a thousand dollars Canadian. So okay. convert that into your own currency. So wow. So. Yeah. Is that a studio, one bedroom? Studio, yeah. Studio, yeah. nice, nice. And I, th- I think one of the main things you get about Eastwood is the convenience, like you mentioned. Very convenient. Yeah. It's not a very big city, no. but everything is completely accessible yeah. to you. Yeah, and the nice thing about it is it's really easy to to get a grab from, you know, mm. just because it, there's a lot of landmarks, so it's easy for a grab to find it, because mm. I find that, you know, I've, I've been to different areas here, and depending on the landmark that you pick, Sometimes the grab driver gets confused. Right. Yeah. Right, in Eastwood, right. it's been really consistent. One hundred percent. It's a little bit hard to compare your expenses, apples to oranges, of living in the Philippines versus being in Canada, just because your dad owns a place yeah, here. Yeah, I have Eastwood. some advantages, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have yeah. the free rent here. Yeah. But so if we compare it to like your. Um, but if I was to like get my own rent, you know, mm-hmm. I would probably. Sorry, if I was to get my own place and pay rent, I would probably pay like 30,000 30, pesos a month. Thirty thousand pesos. Yeah. So, so roughly around like six hundred dollars yeah. for yeah USD, but uh, if you keep compare- in mind too, like I yeah. don't want to live in a big place, right? That's just my preference. You know, like I'm an extrovert. I love being out, right. and I don't enjoy cleaning my place. <laughs> I would always pick a smaller yeah. place to begin with. So yeah. So yeah. if we use like um, Southeast Asia in general as a sure. benchmark, you, sure. For example, Bali. Yeah. How much would you spend on like an average month there? I spent about six hundred Canadian dollars a month in okay. Bali, and and my accommodation was a twelve minute walk from the beach and 600 600 for rent right yeah canadian dollars a month yeah. okay okay yeah, yeah. it's and not it's not like you know the, the fanciest place but it's clean you know it's got everything right so it really depends on I mean, or, or you can get a, a villa for like a thousand dollars you know twelve hundred dollar dollars canadian a month in bali mm. like it, it really depends on you like for me my intention going to bali was to see bali right not to mm. stay in the most luxurious place right like i didn't stay in you know like like a like a dumpy place you know but right. it was like it was good enough to serve its purposes yeah. um yeah because my intention is to explore bali right 100 so, percent. Yeah. yeah i mean with beautiful beaches like that you don't want to be inside all exactly day. yeah you want to be inside so yeah. 
as far you can't as get a tan indoors, right? Exactly, so you gotta be outside, exactly. yeah. So as far as your cost of living back in the West, back in Canada, what was that like? Yeah, so I was living in a one bedroom apartment downtown in a brand new, like, like pretty new condo building. And we were paying $1,800 Canadian. Okay. Last time I checked, that is now $2,300 Canadian. $2,300, oh, yeah, it went up. for a one bedroom. Yeah, yeah. So, and as far as your, like, your entire cost of living, what would you see you're spending monthly there? I would say I was spending about, like my grocery, okay, so we were, I, and I was sh I'm sharing rent with my girlfriend, right? So mm. our rent is $1,800 Canadian. My grocery bill was like $500 Canadian, which is, you know, quite a lot. Yeah. And then eating out, I would say it would be like $700 Canadian. Okay. So that's just on a personal expense. Obviously, I have my business expense too, but I think overall like, like, like $4,500. 4500 Yeah. Okay. But you're spending way less over here. Yeah, way less. Out in Southeast yeah. Asia. Yeah, I'm saving like 60%. Right, living right, here. Right. So as we close, Micah, can you tell us a little bit more about your YouTube channel for those who want to check it out? Yeah, sure. So I make content on communication skills, overcoming social anxiety, having a social life. So if that's the stuff that you're into, just look up Social Confidence Mastery. Mm -hmm. I have a podcast as well. Um, if you if you want to read, I have a blog. So yeah, just right. Social Confidence Mastery. You can find all my content online. Fantastic. So we'll link his channel in the description down below. Last question, any uh, coming plans for 2024? 2024, definitely to sample more of all the different Asian countries. So nice. on, uh, so far we've got uh, Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia on the list. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll see, we'll, um, we'll add more, we'll make adjustments along the way, so yeah. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Well, a lot of traveling to come and uh, probably not going to see you for a while now. Like, I'll be back, you know? He'll yeah, be back, he'll yeah. be back. Uh, but, oh, I'll yeah. just send you so many pictures of where I'm at. And then You'll, forces me to go exactly. out and leave the Philippines. <laughs> so if you guys see the end of Philippine Savvy X Cat, <laughs> you know who it's, who, why, why it I is. I know, it's because yeah, of it's my fault. Well, anyways, Mike, I appreciate you coming on to Thank the Thank you so much for having me, Evan. Of Great course. questions. And yeah, I had so much fun having this conversation with you. 100%. So thank you guys for watching as well, and we'll see you in the next video. God bless.